So there is no doubt about it. Akitas are glorious dogs, beautiful, proud, fiercely loyal to their owners, very protective by nature. But choosing an Akita as your next dog may turn out to be the worst choice you have ever made. And in this video, we're gonna look at the five main reasons why you should not get an Akita. Welcome back to the Fenrir Akita Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I am a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Akita, then how to become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Akita companions. So if you're a lifelong Akita lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with a new Akita, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Akita video. But let's dive into today's video and we'll jump straight into the very first and very important reason why you should not get an Akita. Now that reason at number five is that if you are a novice dog owner. Now, if you have never owned a dog before, the Akita most definitely is not the place to start. These fierce and powerful guardians require a firm but gentle hand and have to be trained and socialized skillfully and right from day one. Calm, consistent leadership is absolutely vital. Now, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to that you have gained lots of experience in raising, socializing, and educating dogs before you even think about bringing an Akita into your home. Even professional dog trainers and canine behaviorists regard working with Akitas as a challenge. A challenge that, like myself, we take very seriously because of the ancient Japanese natural instincts and origins of being a more independently minded guarding breed. These are not the kind of dogs to easily forgive unfair or even violent treatment. Therefore, heavy-handed training methods can easily backfire with this guardian breed. Now, on the other hand, trying to train them following a positive-only approach is just as equally a recipe for disaster with this kind of breed. Any perceived weakness on your part as their leader will be sensed and exploited by your Akita. And sensing this kind of weakness, he will do his best to assume that leadership position himself. And an Akita as the leader of a household is an accident waiting to happen because they will then make their own decisions. These decisions can and do get people severely hurt. Now, even family members tend to get badly injured in this way, and it's one of the most common reasons that young children get bit by guarding breeds like the Akita. So if you are a novice dog owner and you have your eyes set on getting an Akita, I really consider you to ask yourself this. Are you willing to risk the health, well-being, and perhaps even the life of your partner, parents, children, or other animals? As an attacking Akita is the worst case scenario, and take my experience, my first-hand experience, into account account that that can and does happen. It very well might be the worst case scenario and people may never have come across it, but it can and does happen. So I wanted to start there and hopefully maybe get you to reconsider if you are a novice first time owner. Now, the reason I have at number four is if you don't have too much time for an Akita. Now, whilst it is possible to raise a puppy and work full-time job away from the home, it really isn't ideal. Such a situation requires lots of planning and preparation. For example, things like arranging doggy daycare or dog sitters or dog walkers for your new dog. Now, however, raising an Akita whilst being out working all day isn't really a good plan. Not only due to that pronounced independency or in the words of many seasoned Akita to owners that notorious stubbornness but also because they often dislike being handled by strangers if challenged in any way even very younger keaters can respond quite aggressively and by respond aggressively i don't mean just simply puppy biting and nipping but quite serious aggressive behaviors and as we all know people getting bitten is an excellent way to have your dog put down which is exactly what we are trying to avoid here because guess what your cute little akita puppy will very quickly quickly grow up into a very large muscular canine and this large muscular breed will still need to be taken out for walks by someone else whilst you are out walking all day. 
Now, another reason why you should not get Enikita if you don't have kind of a ton of time on your hands to really dedicate yourself to the task is their immense need for physical activity and mental stimulation. These are not house pets by nature, but they are highly intelligent working dogs. Therefore, in order to grow into well-rounded, content, and therefore less aggressive adults, they absolutely require you as their leader to spend quality time with them, taking them on long walks engaging them in obedience work and playing with them in the garden is all highly critical but are all things that require a lot of time which leads us straight into reason number three why you possibly should not get an Akita and that is if you live in an apartment or small house and there is little to no safe outside space for your dog to run and play. Now these conditions may work very well for a smaller less active breed but not for the independent athletic and agile Akita. Bear in mind these are large dogs who can reach a height well over 70 centimeters and as such they absolutely need a large amount of outdoor space not only to run and play but also for fulfill that natural instinct of regularly patrolling the perimeter of their territory. Now with the Akita, walks alone will not fulfill their need for exercise simply because you cannot adequately tire them out whilst having them on their lead. And due to their pronounced prey drive and independence, I don't necessarily recommend that you ever really walk in them off leash. Therefore, they must be provided with lots of safe garden and yard space. Now, if you cannot offer such space to your Akita, then this should not, at this point, Point in your life be the right time to be considering getting in a breed like the Akita. Now at number two is that if you presently have kind of limited financial resources it might be best to postpone bringing any dog into your home especially a large breed like the Akita. People often underestimate how costly owning a dog really is. Even if you adopt one from the shelter it will still require equipment such as toys, leashes, dogs beds and crates as well as regular vaccinations and perhaps even expensive medications should any health issues arise. At any given time your dog might have an accident or need a costly operation or it might develop cancer or other serious issues and especially without pet insurance these expenses can be ruinous and you might be faced with the grim future of having to have your dog put down simply because you cannot afford the surgery and or the treatment that is required. Now because the Akita is a very large breed all these costs will be ramped up even more. Surgeries are much more costly in large dogs simply because of their increased weight and this is not even mentioning the regular expense for buying an Akita puppy from a reputable breeder or the expenses involved in raising one well and then in feeding it a high quality food in order to avoid those future health issues. So if you do find yourself currently in a bit of a tight spot with your finances then you should not get an Akita right now. That is not to say that you can never have one just give yourself the time that you need to build that stronger financial basis first. Now, lacking leadership skills is the reason number one why you should not get an Akita, because this breed absolutely 100% needs you to be a calm, consistent canine leader. To safely own an Akita, you must have far more than just experience, time, space and money to devote to your dog. You have to be able to take charge and be your Akita's calm, consistent leader all of the time throughout the rest of its life. This is the foundation of your future with the dog. Without that foundation firmly in place, you are setting yourself and your dog up to fail. You may be an experienced dog owner and very knowledgeable in the fields of obedience training, manners and socialization, but having an Akita on your hands is a whole different ball game. Therefore, unless you are ready to step up and establish a high level of canine leadership, the Akita is not the right choice for you. Now, by the way, the very same applies to each and every member of the household. You need to ask yourself, is your wife or your husband able to willing and willing to be able to fully commit and on the same page as you when it comes to raising and tre training a breed like an Akita? And what about the children in the household, if there is any? Quite obviously, very young children cannot and shouldn't really be expected to be calm, consistent canine leaders yet. However, with a golden retriever, for example, that's not quite as big of an issue. But with a breed like an Akita, it can and often is, unfortunately, extremely dangerous.
Now, should any of those five reasons why you should not get an Akita might apply to you, that does not mean that you can never safely own one of these beautiful guardians. It simply means that you still have some work to do ahead of you, building yourself up in self-confidence, leadership skills, knowledge about canine behavior, as well as gathering experiences with large guardian breeds. For example, you could start off by volunteering at your local shelter. This not only helps the dogs there, but it gives you invaluable hands-on experience experience with a variety of different breeds. Now, if you are a novice owner and need experience in the field more of dog ownership, you might want to start with a more forgiving and gentle breed, such as a retriever. Or if you want a large, powerful breed similar to an Akita, maybe look at a Newfoundland. And after you've built yourself up to an experienced, calm, consistent canine leader, then you might very well be ready to share your life with an Akita. And when you're at that stage, it's then when the Akita can make a perfect fit and be a wonderful canine companion. Now, I hope you enjoy today's video if so make sure you hit that like button don't forget to get involved down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on owning a new, a new akita and don't forget that if you are new subscribe we have two dedicated akita videos coming here every single week so i cannot wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the femrear akita show